heaven's reserve. He's stored up enough for every winter I'm served. I'm seeing beyond my circumstance. This joy that I have is my inheritance joy. This is the joy of the Lord. The chorus says, the joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, oh, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, oh, oh. he is my hope. Yes, he is. The joy, the joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. God bless you, brother Jimmy. God bless you. There's gonna be glory. Brussy. Please let's go ahead and, and share. No need to let's go ahead and share this. God bless you. The 
joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, oh he is my soul. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, oh, he is my strength. God bless you, Minister Thompson. You are mightily blessed. Thank you for joining in tonight. Oh, oh, he is my the joy. The joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Please let's go ahead and just let's share, let's invite others you know, to this covenant hour of prayer. Put on strength. You need to put on strength. Put on joy. Put on joy. Put on love. Don't take it off. Put on strength. Put on joy. Put on love. And don't take it off. The only way the world will change is if we put on strength. Put on joy. Put on love. Put, put on, on love. love. Don't take it off. The only way things happen is if put we put on, on strength. Put on joy. Put on love. Put on love. Don't take it off. Don't take it off. Don't take it off. Don't take it off. We won't take it off. We won't take it off. We commit. Yes, Lord, we won't, we take, won't it take it up. We won't 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 take it up. We commit today. We won't take it up. I've decided. I won't take it up. We 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 won't take it up. Put on joy. Oh, the joy of the Lord. We won't take it off. We won't take it off. We won't take it off. We've decided we won't take it off. Won't take it off. Take it up. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Peace of the Lord won't take The peace of the Lord is my strength. The peace of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The spirit of the Lord, we won't take it off. Won't take it off. I won't take it off. I will hold you forever, Lord. Oh, I will hold you unto you, Lord. I will hold unto you, Lord. Unto you till the end. I won't take it off. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Listen to Robo Zundarama, listen to Zundarama. Oh, 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 the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'll never let go. Oh, I won't let go. I won't let go. I will never ever let go of you, Lord. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
never let go of your hand. 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 Yes, Lord. I'm fighting for attention, fighting for affection. I belong there. I belong in your presence, Lord. I will not let go of you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So don't never, the Lord. Never let go of your hand, Lord. Never let go of your hand. 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 The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 The hope of the Lord is my strength. The peace of the Lord is my strength. I'll never let go of your hands. I'll never let go of your hands. God bless you, everyone that is joining tonight for this covenant hour of prayer. The joy of the Lord is your strength in the name of Jesus. I pray that all the days of your life you will continue hold on to the lord you continue hold on to him the storms of life will not sweep you away from the grip of the lord the flood of the enemy the flood of evil will not keep you away from the Lord. I just want to encourage somebody tonight. I want to lift you up from the pit that life wants to keep you. I want to set you free from the prison of disappointments from the prison of pain from the prison of depression and i want to release unto you the joy of the lord joy of the lord for strength 
for liberty to set you up on your path for living and that path is what I titled serving is living when you serve God with joy you are living life God has given you and I everything that pertains to life and godliness. And one important part of that is serving God. And tonight I will be talking with us, praying with us on what I titled serving is living. You know, in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, Joshua said something very prophetic and very profound. He said, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the the Lord. Our covenant fathers enjoyed delightsome encounters with God through their service. Abraham served God to the point that he was called the friend of God. Moses served God to the point he was called the meekest man in the face of the earth. Serving God with delightsome obedience is the pathway to living. Have you ever wondered why our fathers lived a very long life? How our fathers lived for so long, it is because they were serving God and they were serving God with joy. According to Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, he said, Then he said unto them, Go your ways, eat the fat. Drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Did you hear that? Send portion. So don't just eat alone. Serve God with what you have. For this day, serve others with what you have. Serve your community with what you have. Serve your brethren with what you have. For this day is only unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And that is how you sustain strength for living. When you serve God, when you serve others, you 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 get strength for life and for living my life is not my own to you i belong i give myself i give myself to you my life is not my own to you i belong 
I give myself, I give myself to you. People of God, tonight, two sets of people will be listening to me. Because in every meeting, there are always two sets of people. And these are those who hear and apply what they've heard. And those who hear and do nothing. Coming to a service, an encounter like this, does not change you until you begin to put to practice what you've had. In Romans chapter 15 verse 4, he said, For whatsoever things were written at four times, were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of scriptures, might have hope. So tonight, how do you serve God so that you can live life and live it in abundance? How do you serve God that your life can have a meaning? How do you serve God that your life can make a difference? How do you serve God that you can end, you can live life to the full. Like I said, number one, you must serve God with joy. Serving God with joy. Serving God with gladness of earth. Serving God with excitement. Serving God. With love. Those are the ways you can live life and live life in abundance. And another way you need to serve God, you need to serve God with patience. Many are too much in a hurry. You need to serve God patiently and when you serve God patiently, He is a rewarder. Of those that are patient and diligent in serving him. He said, be you not slothful. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. There is a promise of God. Upon your life. There is a promise of God. Concerning your destiny. But when you serve God. With patience. With joy. With excitement. In faith. Then you can gain access. To those promises. People of God. He said, He that faithfully endures to the end shall receive the promise. He that faithfully endures to the end shall receive the promise. It is not how well you start that matters, but how strong that you end. How you end strong is what matters. I pray for everyone under the influence of my voice. I pray for you, Sister McQueena. I pray for you, Sister Hela. I pray for you, Brother Javier. I pray for you, Brother Arabian Jerry. And I decree and I declare that you will not lose your promises before it, you receive it in the name of Jesus. That you will be patient and you will endure. That all your labor, all your service that you have put in into the kingdom 
shall you shall receive the rewards in the name of Jesus. You know, many have lost their reward because they were too impatient. Because they were too much in a hurry. And one thing I want you to know is that God perfects everything in his own time. The blessings of God is not like a nodus that you just put in the microwave and it's ready to serve. The blessings of God is not a quick gap blessing. The blessings of God takes for you to get it in full. You must be willing to be patient for it. You know, in James chapter 5 verse 11, he said, Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the hand of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and tender of mercy. You saw the way Job endured. Despite the challenges that he went through, despite the storms that came to his life, to his home. But he chose to endure. And according to Job chapter 42 verse 10, we saw how God gave him a dub, a restored everything that he lost double fold. I pray for somebody under the influence of my voice right now. That no matter the storms, no matter the challenge you are going through, as you endure, as you continue serving God with patience, as you continue to hold on to God, I see God giving you double fold restoration in the name of jesus i see god giving you double fold restoration in the name of jesus i see god wiping away your tears and giving you joy unspeakable full of glory in the name of jesus the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You need to serve God with joy. You need to serve God with patience. And He will give you strength to endure to the end. The strength to hold on. The strength not to quit when it is the easiest thing to do. The strength to say no to every distraction that the enemy wants to bring your way. The Lord will grant unto you in the name of Jesus. Serving God is living. And it's what's going to allow you to live your life to the full. To live your life to fulfillment. To live your life in abundance. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I pray for you. Sister Hella. I pray for you. Pastor Kimi. That you will not give up early. You will not let go hell. You will hold on to God to the end. I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. Jesus 
pull me by his hands. I won't let go. 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 Jesus holds me by the hands. And I won't let go. Serving God is living. If you have made a choice to serve God, then you need patience. A master of patience is a master of everything. Patience is the fuel and the energy that keeps you going until you breach the tape. It keeps you going till the end. He said, God is a rewarder for those that are patiently diligent in seeking him. Heaven's crown will always fit the head of those who endure till the end. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, I have run my race. I have finished my course. And now await me the crown of righteousness. There is a crown that is awaiting those that are diligent and patient enough to endure till the end. You see, in Mark chapter 13, verse 13, Mark chapter 13, verse 13. It says, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Did somebody hear that? <laughs> men will hate you. Men will denounce you. Men might forsake you. But when you choose to endure till the end, when you choose to endure to the end, your salvation will be secured. Your crown will be secured. Your glory will be secured. Your place in life and destiny will be secured. Only those that endure to the end will receive the crown. One thing I want you to know is this. Patience is not a gift of the Spirit. It is a fruit of the Spirit. You cannot say, Lord, I'm praying for patience. It's not a gift. It is something you must consciously cultivate and nurture. I pray that none of us will fail and none of us will fall by the wayside in the name of Jesus. That you will not fall by the wayside in the name of Jesus. Patience is not something we have. Patience is something we do. Did we get that? Patience is not something we have. No, I, you, you, it's something we do. May your life be demonstrated by your patience. May your service be with patience, endurance, until you receive your reward in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. God is not against speed, but God is against unholy speed. God is not against riches, but God is against getting rich quick syndrome. There is a time for learning. There is a time for experience. There is a time for stability. Waiting time is not wasting time. Serving God is not the cooking and preparation of oh nodus. Reward for service have a time called the waiting time. A time for you to learn, to experience, and for stability. That when God gives you the reward, that reward will not kill you. That reward will not bring you down. That reward will not stop you. Samson was not tested before the Lord gave him the anointing and the power. And that was the same thing that killed him. Because he did not know how to unnest it well. In James chapter 5 verse 7. The Bible says be patient. Therefore brethren. Unto the coming of the Lord. Behold the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth. And has long patience for it. Until he receives the heli and the latter rain. Until he receives the early and the latter rain. May you receive your own early and latter rain in the name of Jesus. May you receive your own early and latter rain in the name of Jesus. You know, Job had challenges, but he never stopped serving God. Romans chapter 8 verse 35 says, What shall separate us from the love of God? What shall separate us from the love of God? And another thing I want to encourage us about tonight the Bible says we've been called to serve our serving is living and when we live we must live for others to live. Did somebody hear that? We serve to live. And when we live, we should live for others to live. You need to live for others to live. That is the kind of service that makes sense in this kingdom. You don't just live for yourself. You live for others to live. You know, in, in the book of Job, chapter 29, verse 10 to 13, See what Job said. When the ear heard me, then he blessed me. And when the eye saw me, he gave witness to me. Why? Because I delivered the poor that cried. And the fatherless and him that had none to help him. 
the blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me. And I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Job was living for others to live. He went further in verse 17, verse 15 to 17. He said, I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not, I searched out. And I broke the jaws of the wicked, and I plucked the spoil out of his teeth. This was one of Job's secrets that made him endure to the end. As he was going through his own storm, but he still had time to be a blessing, to serve others. Serving God pays. And serving God pays big. And when you serve God by serving others, that even pays bigger than any other thing. There is no exercise better than for the heart to reach down and lift other people up. One thing I want you to know, people of God, no one is useless in this world who lightens the burdens of others. Jesus said to his disciples, Because I live, you shall live also. Your life should be reflected in others. Serving God is living. And when you serve others, you even live better. Your life, you are living for others to live. Because I am blessed, you are also blessed. Because I am, I have to eat, you will also have to eat. Because I have a bed to lay my head, you also have a, a space to lay your head. You cannot say you are serving God and giving to others is a struggle for you. Many live in the prison of self so they become self-defined in life. Many live in the prison of self and they become self-detained. They are selfish, they are greedy, they are egoistic and chauvinistic. If you want to live in joy, don't live for yourself alone. I say, if you want to live in joy and draw the strength to live a good life, don't live for yourself alone. Live for others to live. Live for others to be lifted. Live for others to be blessed. Learn to live for others. You know, Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15, that I am ready to spend and be spent for others. If you are truly serving God, then be ready to spend your money. There's somebody, someone you have more than. There's someone you are better than. As long as you are always collecting, you are always collecting, you are always receiving, you are always a collector, you will never go far in life. No water can drink itself no fruit can eat itself. No soil can grow itself. When you live for others to live, you become the water people can use to quench their thirst. You become the fruit 
that people can eat and be satisfied. And you become the soil. People can plant themselves in and grow through you. In your own capacity, serve God with your substance. Serve God with the little that you have. Serve God by serving others. Live and let others live because of you. Serve God with all your means. You cannot be in, in a church and you find it difficult to tell a fellow brethren living around your neighborhood that does not have a car to say, don't worry, I will bring you to church. Don't worry, I will come pick you up and bring you to church. You cannot be a Christian and you find it difficult saying, I will give you lunch. You know, when you come to our church, Covenant of Faith, Family Ministries, every, after every service, we try as little as we can to give lunch. Because that is, if I have something to eat for lunch, the least I can do is to provide lunch for others. Because I don't know when they get back to the house, if there's something for them to eat. After Jesus' crusades, he will always say, what do we have to serve these ones? People of God, that is how you live your life. You live it while being mindful of people around you. You live it while you are seeing the people around you. You leave it why as and you you imagine how can you be a blessing to the people around you? Any man that wants to remain poor, the first language is God knows I don't have. That is the language of that one person that will remain poor in his life. The truth is, you have to give what you don't have to access what God has in store for you. Wealth without it flowing out is useless. There is a sea called the Dead Sea. It receives, but it does not have any tributary out. And no wonder it is called the Dead Sea. Because everything inside of it is rotten. And there is another river close by. The River Jordan. And that gives its tributary and it becomes the River Galilee. River Galilee gives also something out. And that is why in River Galilee there is life. You go there, that was where Jesus went to be baptized. And both rivers receive from River Jordan. The Dead Sea received from River Jordan. River Galilee received from River Jordan. But only River of Galilee has life. That is where Peter was fishing. But in the Dead Sea, there was no life. Why? Because it never gave out. River Galilee was the brook which Elijah, God sent Elijah to be replenished. Where the raven came to sustain him through the time of famine. The rich fool was a fool 
because it was all about him. Job said, I was fit to the lame. I was eyes to the blind. I was husband to the widow. And I was what? I was everything. The husband to the widow. I was a blessing. And that was what made him the greatest out of the East. No poor man can be wealthy if he does not become a giver. I will say that again. No poor man can become a rich man. No matter how much you receive, until you become, you begin to give. No man can pity you out of poverty. The pity of men will not take you away from the poverty. You need to consciously step yourself out. That I have something, I can live my life also through somebody. My life can also be a blessing to somebody. If your money cannot be used for the propagation of the gospel, I wonder what you want to use your money for. Learn to share what you have with others, no matter how little it is. You don't have to have much to be able to reach out to someone to be blessed in Christ. You don't have to have much to give to others. See what the Bible says in Luke chapter 16. Verse 10 to 11. Luke chapter 16. Verse 10 to 11. Say, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in the most. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? If you are not faithful with the little that God has given to you, God is not ready to commit generational wealth into your hands. God will not be willing and ready to commit generational wealth into your hands. He told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, I will make you great. I will make you blessed. And then I will bless you. Then you, you have to be a blessing. Then you shall be great. If you want to end up being great in this life, then you need to be a blessing to your generation. There's somebody that that you can be a blessing to. Singing without giving is entertainment. If you cannot give little things to others, you cannot give big things to them. If you cannot pay your tithe when you are earning $100, don't think you will be able to pay your tithe when you have $10,000. If you cannot pay, if you cannot give offering, when you have $50, don't think you'll be willing to give offering when you have $50,000. I let you know something. Distribution is the secret to supernatural encounters. Living without giving is dying without knowing. I will say that again. Living without giving 
is dying without knowing. Many people are dead. They are just, they are just, they are just, it's just a little time before they are put on in the grave. They are living corpse already. Not out of sacrifice, but out of selfishness. There's a difference when you live your life as a living sacrifice, but there is a difference when you live your life as a selfish being. A living sacrifice is dead to their flesh, but a, a selfish one is dead in their spirit. When you are dead in your spirit, you are selfish. Living without giving is dying without knowing. Their spirits are dead. You know, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 21 to 23. Matthew 25, 21 to 23. Says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou unto the joy of the Lord. Like I said, when you serve God and you serve others, you gain access to the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. And you are able to live life to the fullest. He also, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, that delivereth unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So the reward of service, when God gives you one talent, they brought in a second talent. When God gave them two talents, they brought in two additional talents. The, the reward of service is more service. If you won five souls last year through your love, through your giving, you are expected to win ten souls this year. Keep serving God until your time on heart is over. Nothing should stop you from serving God. There is what we call faithful service, and there is a faithful service. Ensure your service is a faithful service. Don't serve God because of people you see around to be noticed. Serve God. Because you love him. As we round up. If you want to be a blessing to the ministry. And you want to support what we do. I want you to go ahead and uh, just... Uh, 
click the Facebook donate button or you can give through our cash app dollar sign covenant faith family you can also give via our test giving There will be glory. No need to worry. This presence hurry. There will be glory after this. Sing it out. There's gonna be glory. There's gonna be glory. There will be glory after this. Joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy, oh, is my strength. Joy, joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. God bless you, everyone that has tuned in tonight. May the joy of the Lord be your strength in the name of Jesus. And how do you find joy? Joy through your service. Serving others. Letting others draw strength from you. God bless you and God keep you. And may his face continue to shine upon you in the name of Jesus. As we round up tonight, 
I'd like to invite you tomorrow for our crossover Hosanna night prophetic service as we cross into the month of August. I look forward to you and your loved ones coming to serve God in this house. And I know that your life will not be the same in the name of Jesus. And on Sunday at 11 a.m., we shall have our prophetic entrance service into the month of August. It shall be a powerful, mind-lifting service that you and I will not remain the same after that encounter in the name of Jesus. God bless you and God increase you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's sing our song right now as we close. We are heirs of the Father. We are joined heirs with the Son. We are children of the Kingdom. We are covenant family. We are one. And so surely, goodness and favor shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you same time next Friday for another covenant hour of prayer. Amen.